an immense amount of what human beings decide to do happens in the unconscious mind. Yes. The things that motivate us are things that we don't produce in the logical, deductive, left side of our brain format. We make emotional decisions based on what we know, we trust, we like. We make large amounts of commitment to brands and companies and people who we feel are already familiar and otherwise emotionally connected to us. And yep. that is the magic of a well-produced broadcast campaign. Welcome to the Maven Marketing Podcast. Today is Maven Monday. I'm your host, Brandon Welch, and I'm here with Caleb, the coach, AG. The Caleb, coach? The coach. Caleb just finished his first season as a football yeah, flag, of the flag. Flag football. Flag football coaching. What is one takeaway you can give us from that experience? Mm. I didn't know you were going to do this. One takeaway from the flag football experience, you can always learn a different way to exercise your leadership. Ooh. Leadership shows up in many yes. areas. And with nine and 10-year-old boys, they need a lot of leadership. They sure do. And it's, it's a very different uh, version of it. So, Speaking of leadership, let's talk to some leaders about marketing. Let's do it. Love it. This is the place where we answer your real-life marketing questions so you can eliminate waste in advertising, grow your business, and achieve the big dream. And today, we're going to talk about something that most business owners struggle with, at least at some point, yeah. TV and radio campaign performance. Yeah. Everybody wants to know, you know, when you put marketing dollars in, you want to know that it's going to return. I yes. mean, it's any investment in business or in life. You want to know that it's going to come back around, right? So, yeah. So what happens is most... Most TV and radio conversations are started by people who sell TV and radio. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking specifically for my businesses that are probably sub $5 million who have grown uh, organically through their community and just doing the right things as a business. But when you want to increase past a certain market share, when you want to increase past your certain circle and the circles that your employees and maybe your church and your community and just being visible in your town happens, mm -hmm. you're going to have to turn up a bigger megaphone. You're going to yeah. have to appeal to people who wouldn't encounter you otherwise. And so that is what we call tomorrow marketing. Yeah. We go beyond our inside circle and we reach a lot of people at once through what we call broadcast. Yes. TV and radio to this point in time, like TV and radio as of now, are still the most efficient ways to reach large, large, large groups of people. Mm -hmm. There are much better ways to target people and do things like yeah, social media targeting, Google, we talk a lot about those. But broadcast to this day, even if you're going to people still listen to radio and still watch TV, the answer is yes by the tens of thousands. And there's an episode we're going to do on ratings data and all that and how you know that. Mm -hmm. But large, massive groups of people, still the best way to reach them is through TV and radio in most markets Yeah, and for most demographics. A lot of people would call this, we call it tomorrow marketing, tomorrow customer bonding, right? We're connecting with those tomorrow customers. A lot of people would call it branding or maybe trying to create top of mind awareness, right? When they don't need me today, but someday they will. And I hope that I come to mind when they need me. And so uh, we always call it, this is our insider language. You're a part of Mavens. You're a part of this insider language. Um, but we, we are talking about tomorrow customers and we want to make sure that we think about them um, not as today customers, which is a very different measurement, a different mindset. We want to make sure that we measure them more in months and years instead of in days and weeks. Yes. And that that's what we're, we're talking about today is the seven clues along the way to know whether or not your TV and radio campaigns are, yes. are really working. Because frankly, on the beginning of a campaign, if you've got a good campaign that is going to work, it feels the exact same as a campaign that is not going to work. Yeah. And so most most um, well-meaning broadcast sales folks will, to get the sale, they will agree with whatever your logic is to measure this. And they'll mm -hmm. say, yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. I've got businesses that grow all the time. And they'll say, cool, well, I'll we'll see how many calls I get and we'll try it for three months. And they go, cool, sign the, sign the piece of paper. And then they take the contract back to the station and they throw it to an overworked production guy and they say, make an ad. Mm -hmm. And here's how many years they've been in business and here's their trucks and here's the location and go out and shoot an ad or come into the studio and record an ad. And then you get three months that go by and he goes, well, I haven't heard anybody call. I haven't mm -hmm. heard anybody say they saw my ad. And it's like, that is where most people, A, have the wrong strategy and message in place to begin with, but B, make a premature decision off of 
data that is frankly not reliable to predict what is going to happen in the future of the campaign. Yes. So, yes, a big problem is that people plug, pull the plug too short, um, but it's because they have nothing else to go off of other than they say, hey, Caleb, did you see my ad? Did yeah. you hear us on TV? How did you, how'd how'd you, you hear about, about this? That's yeah. it right there. <laughs> and there are a bunch of reasons why that is actually neurologically, psychologically, um, statistically not a safe measurement. Mm -hmm. um, and just to put a bow on that, m most people, neuroscientists agree, cannot tell you 90% of what has happened to them in the last 24 hours. But just, and you can think about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, the O'Reilly auto parts is here in town. I promise you, I choose O'Reilly's over the other auto parts stores in our city mm. because of the commercials they ran when I was a child. Yes. I haven't heard an O'Reilly's ad. Oh, in, oh, oh. Sing it. O'Reilly's. Auto parts. So. Wow. Andy's frozen custard. Yes. They still have equity in my brain because of the tomorrow marketing they did riding in the backseat of your mom's 20 van. and 30 years ago mm -hmm. to me. And so if you think about, if you try to make me a linear equation, it's just not going to work. Can you imagine if McDonald's said, how did you hear about us today? Now, I actually did um, the advertising placement for McDonald's for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, on the inside, I was the guy who accepted the orders and put them in. And working with their media buyers, their goal is for you to hear a breakfast commercial while you fall asleep, see one when you wake up, Hear, hear it on the radio and drive by a billboard all before you get to your office. To work, yeah. And if they were sitting there going, how did you hear about us? Why did you buy this Egg McMuffin today? How did you mm -hmm. hear about us? And it's like, nobody would say, well, I saw your billboard and I heard your ad last night as I was falling asleep. It happens in the subconscious, okay? Yeah. And so we're not trying to make an ambiguous thing even more ambiguous, but we are trying to create context that... A immense amount of what human beings decide to do happens in the unconscious mind. Yes. The things that motivate us are things that we don't produce in the logical, deductive left side of our brain um, format. Mm -hmm. We make emotional decisions based on what we know, we trust, we like. Um, we make large amounts of commitment to brands and companies and people who we feel are already familiar and otherwise emotionally connected to us. And yep. that is the magic of a well-produced broadcast campaign. Yes. You are preceding your interaction with them on a physical level and on a logical level with a very unlogical, emotional, unconscious impression. Mm -hmm. And so to the people and to the bookkeepers and to the accountants and to the very intelligent, smart business owners who go, I have to have something to go off of. Mm -hmm. This is a problem I have a conversation I've had for years. Oh, yeah. And so um, there are what we call clues along the way. Mm -hmm. there, there are signs that something is increasing, and it is not going to come in the form of somebody going, I saw your TV ad, and I was waiting to see an ad for a mechanic so that I could decide to get my oil yeah. changed today. It's like, no, or, that's not what happened. Or even, <laughs> and people do these, it's fine, but even putting a tracking number on your TV ad, qualifying just those, just the people that called on that number, yes. those are not all the results of your TV ad. They yeah. oh. think, think about your customer journey. When you buy something, you see the TV ad, you hear it on the radio, you see a billboard, you Google it, you do, maybe you do research, maybe you end up hitting a Google ad, maybe you hit their website directly, maybe you search for their name, or maybe you don't. There, is, there are a hundred thousand different customer paths that all these different people can take yes. to get to you. And if you try to just say A to B, and that's all they did, you're missing out. And we're looking for this, uh, this beautiful, like, cumulative picture yes. of how they're getting to you. Yes. So do just a little bit of math. <clears throat> we do a lot in the uh, window roofing HVAC space. I'm mm -hmm. just going to pull one of them out of, the, out of thin air. <clears throat> About 3% of uh, single-family homes get their windows replaced per year. Okay? okay. Do the math. 3% this year, 3% next year, 3% the next year. It takes about 30 years. 33 years for that equation to complete itself before every home has got new windows until they need them again, right? Mm -hmm. 33 years. About as long as people in this room have been alive, right? 33 years um, means that there's 3% per year in the market. If I take 3% per, per year per market and I divide that by 12 months of the year, mm -hmm. 0.03 divided by 12 equals 
one quarter of 1% per month of the market that could even give a flying flip about Windows. One quarter of 1%. And so if you jump on the TV and all you're talking about is Windows, we need Windows, call now for my Windows. If every person in the entire DMA was sitting there watching your commercial, one quarter of 1% would even have reason to pick yeah. up the phone. We're talking about four months to get 1% of the population to even give to a flying even flip. Need what you're selling. Now, let me take it even further. The Super Bowl doesn't even get half of the audience to watch at the same time. Sure. The Super Bowl, the biggest TV event of any year, right? Mm -hmm. um, the biggest daily television programs may have, may have, like on the largest, most aggressive scale, 10% of the entire population watching. Mm -hmm. So do that. You've got one quarter of one quarter of one quarter of percent who could even give a flying flip. And then you have to assume they were thinking about that with the over 5,000 thoughts they have. Uh, actually, we, we see like 60,000 thoughts a day. So divide that by 24, and there would be thousands of thoughts per hour. Mm -hmm. And then you were one of the ones, you, the stars aligned, and it was the time for them to think about Windows and call you. And so the math and the human behavior of expecting direct response from broadcast can happen. The stars can align. And we have clients every day that av as their ads run, the phone calls come in. That mm -hmm. can happen. Yes. And it happens more when you have a shorter buying window, when you have things like food or when you have things like yeah. entertainment, things that I think about more often than I think about roofs and windows, for mm -hmm. example. But even at that rate, there is a much, 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 much bigger connection and payoff that I can have with a broadcast campaign. And as that ramps up, we start to see clues that don't present in... Yes, it was a linear, I saw your ad and I called you, but there are seven things that we want to talk to you about that you can be looking at because you're going, hey, I've been doing this a few months and I'm not feeling the action or, or man, I tried that. It's, usually I tried that and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And so assuming that you have a good strategy, a good positioning of your product, mm -hmm. and most importantly, you have a message that is capable of making people think and feel good about you. And that is a very big if. Mm -hmm. It's a very big if, right? Yeah. And that's where you want to hire a writer that can do that for you. Yes. Or an agency that can do that for you, that has a track record of doing that for you. Assuming those things are true, here are the seven clues you will see along the way to know I'm onto something and big things are about to happen. Because yep. for most categories, 12 to 18 months in is where you start to go, holy smokes, it's working now. Things are happening. Yes. Yep. Our buddy Greg out in Carolina. Oh, yeah. We were talking to him in December. And I think. He was like, you know, December slow for, um, for his business. He's in home yeah. improvement, but he's like, man, this is a lot of money. Yes. I've been doing it for, he started at the beginning of second quarter, like March yeah. or April. So he'd been doing it roughly nine months, nine months. And he's like, man, uh, this, I know I'm up. It's, it's going up. Um, it's, it's tough. This is a big investment. I'm going to pony back up again for next year. Let's go. And so he's like, but it's really got to work. And we're like, trust us. It's going to, he is looking at in He's a, he's on a what fourteenth fifteenth month running yes. TV and he's fifty percent up this 50 year up. It was year like, over year. He was planting those seeds all along and yeah. his, his campaign reaches about sixty to eighty thousand people a week mm -hmm. and has been winning them over all along. Right. By the way, we're going to put a link to Greg's ads in here so you can see the campaign he's been running. Yeah, that'd be fun. Nate, the camera guy is going to make that happen for you. And it's that, it's that 12 to 18 month mark. It's not that your ad suddenly started working. It's that people suddenly started buying what you have been slowly ramping them up yeah. to all along. Yeah. You think about that one quarter of 1%, you're stacking that and then it's half of 1%, 75% yeah. of 1%, right? And yeah. 1%. Okay. Yeah. Now I've got 2%, yes. 4%, 10% of the, of the audience I've been talking to yes. has come across the need for what I'm selling that stacks up and you, you've invested in them. Yes. And so- with that math, just think about a well-done TV and radio campaign, which the next episode we're going to do is how to buy TV and radio. That's coming out next week. Megan is going to join us, and we're going to do that. Bring okay? it on. Assuming you've done this right, which essentially you want to reach the same people over and over and over and over again. But at the end of one year, you have had, if you do that the way we recommend to do that, you have had in the neighborhood of 50 to 100 times the average person in your audience has been exposed to some one of your message in a broadcast mm -hmm. format. This magic moment w works around. Let's just go back to the Windows or home improvement example. And the spring is when a lot of people decide to take action on those things. 
when I wake up and I go, okay, maybe you got your tax return or maybe it's just time to do it or maybe you're washing the house and you finally decide, okay, I better do something about these dadgum windows or roofs or decks or whatever. Who do you think has a better chance of winning? Greg, who you have seen along with his wife, Mm -hmm. along with a funny, feel-good message over 50 times in the last year. You've been Mm -hmm. exposed to him in your subconscious. Do you think he pops off the search engine page as the guy you want to go with? Or do you think some random company who has some random ad and some random landing, random landing page that says, contact us, is going to win? Yeah, it's going to be Greg all day long. So you guys understand what you we're going it. through. It's the, it's the exact same thing that happens when you get a referral from a friend. A referral from a friend always equals a better result. They'll trust you more. They'll buy. They'll spend a little bit more money. Uh, they're going to ignore competitors. And you're building that familiar friend yeah. inside. To In this marketing. case, the friend is you. And we've that, built this up really it's pretty good. We've, Are you ready? We've disclaimed the heck out of it's, this. So it's big. once you're doing those things, once you know you've got the right schedule and you've got the right message in place, here are the seven things you're going to see ramping up to that big moment where you go, holy smokes, I'm glad I did it's this. It's working. Yeah. Yes. Clue number one, increased direct website traffic and brand searches. So uh, this is people literally typing frankandmaven.com into the URL bar and going yes. directly to your website. Yes. Um, by the way, you can go to frankandmaven.com right now and subscribe to our, our weekly emails. Maven Monday. There's a lot more extra goodies in there for you. Uh, Maven, and frankly, Friday. You like how I plugged that right there? Yes, you did. So so instead of going, show me ad agencies near me, yeah. they go, I've heard about that Frank and Maven. I'm going straight there. By the way, this is happening to us in real time because it, of this podcast. This is our tomorrow marketing. This is our you, tomorrow marketing. It, if you didn't know, yeah. you're being tomorrow marketed. Yeah. Hope you like it. Hey there, um, hey there, friend. Hope um, hope we become more friends. So yeah. Um, but but then brand searches, you can track. Uh, obviously, you can tra- track direct traffic just in your Google Analytics. So you mm-hmm. can say it's literally a category in acquisition direct. Yes, so you'll watch that go up over time, and that's that's a really powerful thing. But then the second one, you can either go to your Google Ads campaign, and look at your maybe your branded keywords, or you can go to Google um, their Webmaster Tools or the or the Search Console. And um, if you look at those, it'll show you the volume of people searching for Frank Maven, Frank and Maven, you know, and you're looking for that, that kind of term showing up and increasing over time. So you'll, you'll also know it because your phone will start ringing and people will be like, um, not that I just saw your TV ad or radio ad or whatever. Um, people will talk to you as if they already know who you are and you will Hmm. feel that in the quality of your conversations, but they went to you. Um, and let's go to the second clue. Uh, so you'll see an analytics direct traffic increasing is a really good sign. We yeah. usually like, frankly, we see that within three to six months in most categories. Yeah. That's assuming you're saying your web address on the ad. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a given, yeah. but, uh, called call to action counts, but even in, in ads where we don't do that, um, it would be, that would be more brand search. They'd be searching for your the name. name. Yeah, yeah. Brand search is looking for your name. So yep. clue number two. Decreased lead cost. So most people who are just getting into the broadcast idea have built their business on relational uh, relationships and buying some sort of leads, whether that's through Google or th- whether that's through a directory or things like Angie's List or um, Home Advisor or any of the number of yeah. lead generation services you could have. And so the problem is when you're showing up only there and a a stranger, somebody who doesn't have the benefit of driving by you every day, seeing your trucks or knowing you otherwise, Mm -hmm. you look the same as all other literally dozens, if not hundreds of options on that search result page. Yep. And so therefore they click you at the same rate they would click anybody else. They call you at the same rate they would call anybody else and they trust you at the same rate they would trust anybody else. What happens when your name is the thing they recognize on that page is they click you more often than they would click somebody else. That's right. They trust you more often and call you more often than they would somebody else. Yep. Which means you're getting more return on your investment from those transactional-based ads than you would normally because you're getting more action for the same amount of money spent. Yep. And it represents itself in decreased lead cost. Yeah, we'll have the same – we have – several clients that are in the same industry, the same business in yes. the different cities across the country. Mm-hmm. And there is a direct correlation and difference to between, uh, we'll just go Google ads. Yes. We can run the exact same campaign, the same strategy, the same keywords, 
in two places, let's say for a roofer, one is hardly run TV ads or has just in the first six months and the other has been doing it for 10 to 15 years. Yes. Or third, uh, actually, third, the actually cost. five to six years. Is it five to six? Of. Okay. Are you thinking of the one I'm thinking of? I think so. Yeah. So we literally have two markets next to each other, similar size markets. We copy pasted the search engine uh, ad strategy. Like setup, yeah. Literally the same, same language on landing pages. Both very good men, both running very good companies. Everything is virtually the same. Mm -hmm. One's getting a $27 cost per lead right now. The other one is paying $313 cost per lead. I promise you every roofer in America would- Murder somebody for would $27 Would leads. give their left arm <laughs> for, yeah, what's the most extreme thing we can think of? Yeah. Uh, for $27 leads, you, that makes hay all day long. You'd kiss a rattlesnake for that kind yeah. of lead cost. You could be the worst salesman in the world and make money off $27 <laughs> leads. Right. You yes. really could. Um, and so we see a decreased lead cost over time. And actually we watch it just trend down and down and down. And that actually leads us to clue number three, which is higher conversion rates on your website. Yes. So all of those things go together, right? We're thinking they go to the search engine, they search for roofer near me. Okay, they didn't have a preference to you maybe as much because yes. they search for roofer. Yes. They didn't think of your name, but then they see your name on the page. And they go, so ah, they, ah, I like that guy. I like or him. I'm gonna suddenly your name recalls all the feelings that that you hopefully have built. I have heard about them. They're a good company. That's kind of how you think about it. They click on that and then they go to your website. Yep. Your conversion rates on that off of those clicks, because you paid as soon as they clicked on yes. Google, you paid when they clicked. Yep. And your conversion rate goes up over time because they already trust you. And so the big thing we want to make sure you know um, is that we, we want to make sure there's a thread between your campaign and your website, yes. your landing page, because it, it needs to use the same. I would, a big cheat is if it's visual, if it's TV, use your characters, use, use your same people. same person and the show, same shirts. Show their faces, show their, yep. the visuals, the graphics that you have flying across. Um, but then also use language from your scripts. Yes. We talk about, uh, like these brand phrases that you yep. have this consistency and they come and they say, ah, this is the same yep. place I thought it was. We were just talking about Greg. His is beautiful windows that won't break the bank. What do you think the very first thing you see on his website? Beautiful windows That's that it. won't break the bank, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, that catchphrase or that brand voice, very high up on language, same pictures, same, obviously same colors. Hopefully that's a no, uh, a no brainer. You are also wanting to add uh, a supplement to the thing you promised. Mm -hmm. So like uh, we talk a lot about the D guarantee we have for a character of ours in Kentucky. What do you, and they talk about the D guarantee, but it's like when you get to the website, we have the full D guarantee. This is what D it's guarantees right you, right? Yep. Um, so all of those things connect it. And you're going to see uh, literally, I think we talked about this, I don't know, a couple episodes ago, but which here's some literal numbers for you. Most home improvement people come to us with a 2 to 3% conversion rate, which is average for a home improvement website. After a year, it's usually 5 to 6% because of the uh, campaign increases we've done. But we have people who have been doing this four or five years. Literally in the 15, 20, and I can think of one that's 25% conversion rate right now. Our $27 lead roofer that's the one. client. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Amazing. Just to read that back to you, before broadcast, one out of 50 people were turning into a lead on your website. Mm -hmm. After a matured broadcast campaign, one out of four are turning into a lead opportunity for you. That's fantastic. Yes. So we're going to take that one step further and... We're going to go with clue number four is higher and easier sales closing ratios. So we're going past the lead, right? We've just, we've, we've talked about decreased lead cost and the conversion rate, which attributes to a decreased lead cost, right? They yes. trust you. They, but then that goes past just marketing mm -hmm. and it goes into your sales conversation. Yes. And you'll notice that your close rates go up and up and up. I have uh, I can think of one company who before they did what we're talking about, this is 3 years ago, their uh, their combined close sales ratio was like 30 to 35%, okay? Mm -hmm. Their lowest guy in the totem pole was probably closing at 20%. Their highest guy was like 45, which is actually really good. Yeah. And the blended was 30 something, right? Yep. About average. Today, after doing the things we're talking about here, 
it is a combined 55% with their <sighs> highest guy in the 60s, oh. their lowest guy somewhere in the 40s, and the middle guys even amount to be like just... a 50. Come on, that guys. Awesome? Let's get it. And and what's happening is these guys are going to the front door, and they're opening and going, oh, and the sales guy, the, the younger sales guy is not the guy who's been on TV. It's sure. the owners. Usually they're on the TV. But they're like, oh. I thought Mike was going to show up. Or, yeah. Oh, where's Joey? Right, and 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 then they're repeating. Did you bring that thing you talked about on TV? Mm-hmm. Um, we have a campaign we're about to produce for an electrician that I'm just bonkers excited about. Um, but we're doing this thing that I guarantee you, within months, people are going to start repeating. Yes, and he's going to point and do this thing, and they're going to be like, "Can you do the thing?" And that happens with the with the campaigns we produce over time. Mm-hmm. And so. What does that what does that mean? They know you trust you and they're just looking to verify when you get in the door. Exactly. Versus the other goober that just came in and did his dog and pony for you. Yeah. You've already built the relationship. That's right. And the sale is so much easier at that point. You're a trusted friend and all they're doing is saying yes. Yeah. Cool. Clue number 5. More repeat and referral business. You can see how this all trickles out. We're kind of going yes. in linear order, right? Yeah, you've got more sales. You're closing better. Now, those people that you've already worked with, we call them your yesterday customers. Yes. They are coming back for more or they're telling their friends about you because they believe in you. And remember, this is because you're doing broadcast media. Mm -hmm. They are seeing you still on TV. When they're sitting on their couch at night, they're watching you and they're like, ah, that's great. And then when a friend is like, I need a new electrician, they're like, you should call so-and-so. You're just keeping gas in that tank. Yeah. It's like when you when you meet somebody and you like them and you do business with them and then you once a year you get their Christmas card you think oh man I like I like that Caleb right yeah and so do the Christmas card by all means mm-hmm. but even better if every other morning they're still seeing you and you're reminding them of that positive impression you're refilling that tank and next time somebody at their office or at their church or whatever is going gosh golly I need some windows instead of them going ah I already did that they're gonna walk out of their way and go no you got to call Caleb <laughs> you need some windows you need yeah. some windows <laughs> yeah. Uh, we literally see, this is funny because sometimes we have to remind people, they're like, well, I had some increase in business this year, but a lot of it came from referral. And we're like, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, double and triple the referral amount of customers just by your past customers being in this large envelope of the broadcast. Yep. That's so, great. You'll clue, see that? Clue number six is your competitors chasing you. Now, this one ticks off some business owners and it yep. makes us smile every time. Um, you know, you're doing something great when you have copycats, hundred percent, you know, you're, you're making waves when somebody tries to do what you're doing. And a lot of times this look like, this looks like, um, your competitor showing up in the same show yep. airtime as you, yep. and you're like, why are you in the, why are, why are you in here? I'm, I, this is my show. I have the six P news. No, actually you don't own it. But, but hopefully they're doing a worse job with their messaging and you've been there way longer. So you're building that trust. 100%. I saw this when I was actually at the TV station. Yeah. I would do a good job for somebody. And then literally like six, seven, eight months later, they would be hearing about this no-name company. The, the, the competitors would start hearing about it. Well, mm-hmm. what about this company? They'd start showing up and they'd competing against them. Mm-hmm. And so now they're seeing their ads and they're calling, asking for one of us salespeople to go out there. We've actually even seen it in our agency where a competitor that um, of of a company we've built up, they don't know that we're the people that did that, but they mm-hmm. call us randomly and and ask us if we can do the same thing. Yeah. But your who who will hear it first is your sales guys. Mm. They'll um they, they'll see your com- competitors start to chase your offers, or um you'll you'll hear oh yeah I can do that too. You'll hear a lot of well they called me back and said they'd beat your offer. You'll hear more of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, while that is a cantankerous thing to be involved in to yeah. start a war. Yeah. Um, you're just being you, man. Yeah. You're just putting your honest, beautiful company out there trying to do good things for good people. Yeah. And that's going to agitate people who are just doing average things. You're, you're not trying to throw a hand grenade in the 6P news and hope that uh, it causes somebody to get upset or, or, ch- or, cha- or, or change. No, you're there for 52 weeks this year. And yeah. guess what? Next year, you'll be there for 52 more weeks. Yep. That's all the weeks, by the way. That's all I, the weeks. I don't know even if you Christmas? knew Christmas. That. That's even Christmas. Even 4th of July. 4th of July, for sure. What about Mother's Day? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. So Your competitors are chasing. You can follow that conversation back to their building and know that they are hearing about you 
Yes. And that's causing causing some problems. And that's great. Nate, cue the drum roll effects for clue number seven. Clue, clue number seven. seven. There's a, there's a. Clue number seven. Faster growth rate annually. You are going to grow faster than you were before. You are going to all of a sudden look back and go, why did I grow 25% and when the last three years I've been growing 8 to 12%? Possibly the year after that, and we have a client that's on par with this, you're going to get back to that 60 to 70% growth rate that you had when you very first started your business. Yeah. Unusual to grow by 50 or more percent in your after your fifth year in business. Yes. Very unusual. Very unusual. But we see it so often. We just talked about Greg mm-hmm. seeing it. Yeah, yeah, Greg's He's well into his, yeah. I don't know, seven, eight years into business, and he is seeing a 50% growth year. And Greg's not slacking. He hasn't been slacking for seven years. He's no. been crushing it for seven years, and he's still seeing 50%. Yeah. It's, it's very easy to double the size of a half million dollar business. It's five times harder to double the size of a million dollar business, and it's like, eight to 10 times harder to double the size of a $2 million business. Yeah. And so commitment to that tomorrow customer, commitment to large audiences of people, commitment to talking to them in a relevant, entertaining, positive way that makes you a trusted provider long before the sale is the secret to Mm -hmm. faster growth, growth rate annually. You go outside your circle, you go outside the average amount of people that interact with you, and you start pulling more people in. And that is the magic of broadcast TV and radio. These seven clues are the ones that are going to tell you it's working and you've got good things coming. But mm-hmm. at the end of your first year, you're going to feel like, okay, that was worth it. And of your second year, you're going to be like, holy smokes, I wish I would have done that sooner. Years four and five, you're taking over your market. Yeah. One of our roofing clients we mentioned there was literally in the bottom 10% of his market when he started doing this stuff. And this is a huge, massive investment for him. This was scary. He's like, if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to sell my house. That was literally his words to me. Mm. He is now about to take over the biggest roofer in his area. He's easily number two and knocking on number one. Um, and it took that number one like 30 years to get to number one. And he's mm-hmm. done this in like five or six. That's crazy. So that is what we have for you today. Yeah. Commit to large audiences. Commit to your tomorrow customer. Don't bore them with silly ads inspire them and make them like you with wonderful ads. And along the way of you spending this money and wondering when's it going to pay off, you're going to see these seven clues. You're going to know good things are coming and you better plan the party. You better plan the big vacation. You better plan the big bonuses for your people because they're going to happen. That's right. And you heard about it here. That's right. Click like, click subscribe, forward it to a friend who needs to hear this. We'll be back here every Monday answering your real-life marketing questions because marketers who can't teach you why are just a fancy lie. Have a great week. 